Hey, party people. People who love to party. It's me, Mr. Bill. I'm here to talk to you today about graphing logarithms and the definition of logarithms, which will then help us graph logarithms. Check it out. We're going to start relatively simple. And we're going to start with exponential functions, something that we already know how to do. And the reason why we do that is because exponential functions and logs or logarithms are related. As you're looking at this guy, we use the methods that we have for graphing exponential functions. We're looking for the asymptote. There's basically a plus zero right there. So our asymptote is going to be right here at y equals zero, otherwise known as the x-axis. I'm just gonna make a note of that for myself. And then we're gonna put in two points. We're gonna discover the curvature and then make an estimation of the graph from there. Two points that we want to plug in are gonna be zero and one. When I plug in zero, I got two to the zero power. Two to the zero power is one. When I plug in the one, I've got two to the one power. Two to the one power is two. Presto change o, I should have an exponential function that is curving up like that. Flattens out this way, curves up that way. Good to go. There is f of x is equal to two to the x power. Look at all the stuff that we can do with that. We could take the reciprocal. We could flip it upside down. And when we do that, our big change is not in the asymptote. The asymptote is the same because you still have plus zero on the end there. The big change is in the points. We're gonna put in zero, gives us one. We're gonna put in negative one. That will flip this upside down and give us two. So we're at zero, one, negative one, two. It is curved the other direction. It's coming down this way, then flattens out going up that direction. Even more stuff we can do, we could find the opposite reciprocal. In this case, we still have the same asymptote. Our asymptote is y is equal to zero. I didn't write it on that other one. Right there, there's the line we're not allowed to go across. And then we're gonna plug in x's and y's. Same as the last one, we want zero and negative one. Not the same as the last one, we get slightly different stuff. When I plug in that zero, it's gonna take one half to the zero power, which is one. And then we apply that negative sign. So it's negative one. I'm gonna plug in negative one. It'll flip it upside down, making two. And then I apply the negative sign, making negative two. This bad boy is on this part of the graph, all weird like. There we go. Still curving towards the asymptote and then away from it right here. So logs, what's going on with this? Well, it's the inverse. And as we know with all of our inverses, what I can do to find it is I can take all my x's and y's and switch them. This also works in our t-chart. So if I go back to the t-chart for the original one up here, which was 0, 1 and 1, 2, I'm going to flip that around and I get 1, 0, 2, 1. The other thing I need is I need an asymptote, but I'm switching my x's and my y's. So if my asymptote was consistently y equals zero for these guys, now it's going to be x equals zero. And all dookie breaks loose now because my asymptote is not horizontal, it's now vertical. Oh my God. We've got a point of one zero, boop, and a point of two one, boop. The way that this is curving towards this asymptote is like this. Oh man. So if I were you, I would be screaming, what does this mean? Directly into my phone or whatever I was watching this on. Well, let's get down to what it means. Specifically, let's get down to the definition of a logarithm. A logarithm is literally the inverse of the exponential function, or as my wife's teacher used to scream at her, the logarithm is the exponent. That's true. I don't know how useful it is, especially to scream at someone who's trying to learn, but it is true. If it's regularly y equals two to the x, the inverse would be log of two, or log base two of y is equal to x. It's normally written like this, and we can translate this into this. Now, I do this very particularly in my brain. 
And what I do is you'll notice we still have all the same letters, only they move places. Well, the biggest place move is the X and the B are gonna trade spots, right? X is now up here, B is now over there. They change sides of the equal sign. Also, the X shrinks because that is the exponent that we're talking about right there. The A, which is the base of our logarithm, is also the base of this exponential equation over here. So it's just going to grow. Switch these two spots, shrink the X, grow the A, you've got your new stuff. Mr. Beal, I still can't understand it without an example. Aha, let me help. Now example like this, I've been doing this long enough that I do not need to show any work. I know that the answer to this is three. But at the beginning, how do you get at this? Well, you're gonna switch these guys to spots, boop, boop. You're gonna grow the five, yikes. You're gonna shrink the X along with the spot switch and it's gonna equal 125. Now this is an exponential equation that we know how to solve because five to the X is equal to five to the third, which means X is equal to three. When you see this, it's effectively asking you what power of five is 125? What power of this base spot is this spot right here that you're taking the logarithm of? Now, it can look all sorts of different ways. We can move the variable wherever we want and still do the problem. This one, you'd switch it, switch it. A grows up, three shrinks, it's equal to eight. So what could you take to the third power that would give you eight? Well, there's a couple of ways to do this. I'd probably cube root both sides in order to get rid of that exponent. And I got A is equal to two. Voila, voila. Another way, log base seven of B is equal to two. We're gonna switch it, switch it. We got seven squared is equal to B. Not much to do here. B is equal to 42, or pardon me, 49. In this question, once again, if you're reading it, you're like, the second power of seven, because that's the power, is equal to what right here? That's what we would get by switching things over. What I'd like you to do is take a look at one through six and do as many of those as you can. I will come back and guide you through seven, eight, nine, and 10. But one through six, please try those right now. Please, 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 try those right now, please. Please. Thank you. I know what you're thinking. Mr. Bill, you didn't write any of the answers down. I have all of the answers. Please relax. What I want to do is skip to the ones that you should know. Or I should say, how can you do this in your brain? You're asking for what base could you have to the power of four that would give you 81? What is the exponent? Or I should say, what's the answer if two is gonna to be to the negative fifth power? Those are a little bit harder to do in your brain. I'd switch the stuff up. This guy though, look at this. What power of eight is gonna give you 64? I would not waste any time showing any work for this. I would just write a two and move on. Some of these other ones work the same way. When you plug in 27 here, log base three of 27, what power of three makes 27? That's three. Over here, what power of four makes one sixteenth? That is negative two. Mr. Beal, no, I can't do it like that. Yeah, yeah, I told you I had the answers, so calm down. See, there are the answers. You switch your stuff, A to the fourth is gonna equal 81. You take the fourth root of both sides, A is equal to three. You switch your stuff, you've got two to the negative fifth power is equal to B. That's one over 32, because it flips it upside down and then takes the two to the fifth power. Over here, you switch the eight and the X, in, or I should say the X and the 64. Eight grows up, X becomes small. 64 is really eight to the second power, which you can do that without the work because of the way that it looks. Over here, you switch your stuff, you end up with five to the fourth is 625. B moves over there, four shrinks, five grows. Now it gets to the tough stuff. I really wanted to make sure you saw that you did not necessarily, necessarily need to show all of this work for this because they make long problems. We plug in that F of 27, we put the 27 there, and then we start undoing the log. Well, look what that gets us. We switch the side for 27 and F of 27. There's 27 equals three 
to the F of 27. That means you've got to lug around F of 27 if you want to show your work for it. Hey, if you got to do that, do that. I just didn't really want to do that, but I did for you. Uh, 27 is really three to the third. Three is going to equal F of 27 because we've got the same bases there. And the same thing happens here. We do this part. I've already written out the negative two over here because when I was doing the problem, I was like, this is making me angry. Why am I doing it like this? I wrote it out. I skipped right to there. But if you wanted to show the work, this would move over here. This shrinks and becomes the exponent of your base. Four to the F of 1 16th is equal to 1 16th. That means this is four to the negative two. It means F of 1 16th has to equal negative two. There is your answer. Now, other stuff to do with logs. We've got a couple of ways of writing logs that we use super quickly. Whoops, that's got all the answers still. Get out of here. The first of which is the common log right here. And you'll always see it written with no base. If it doesn't have a base, that means the base is actually 10. So when I see a problem like this, I can rewrite it as log base 10 of x is equal to 3. And then I can perform my magic. 10 to the third is equal to x. Switch of spots, x and the 3. The 3 is going to shrink. The 10 is going to grow. Looks like x is equal to 1,000. What I'm going to introduce to you now is still, we're still working with the common log, log base 10. So we've got log base 10 of 5. But as you'll see when I do my switchiness, you can even see it here. Right here, I should be able to come up with an answer. But I don't know what power of 10 gives us 5. You might think, oh, 1 half. No, 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 this is power. So 10 to the x is equal to 5. Right now, we can't solve that. We would need to guess and check it. We do not know what power of x does this. I even tried a couple things on my calculator. I did uh, 10 to the 0.5 power, so the 1 half, just to see if it would work. I was curious. Okay. And I got approximately three. I mean, it was, it was a crazy decimal, but approximately three. I then put in 10.7 and I got approximately five. So it's about 0.7, but I had to guess and check these things. We want a solid way to find them. You're not gonna get that from us just yet. Not, there's nothing saying you couldn't look it up on your own though. I mean. We are on the internet right now. Guys, the other thing that we've got is we've got the natural log. Whenever you see LN, you may even see this on your calculator. LN, it means log base E. And E is that weirdo number, that 2.72 approximately. And as you, if you look at the calculator, you always have E to the X right above LN. That's because they're inverses of each other. So when I'm writing this, I want to write it back like that. Log base E of E to the fifth is equal to X. Now, if you can see what this is going to be, if you can take it apart in your brain, it makes everything faster. If you can't, I've got you. E to the X is equal to E to the fifth. So X has to equal five. These things switched places. That guy shrank, that guy grew. There we go. We run into pretty quickly the same issue that we had with number eight though. This problem that we can't solve yet. Over here, this is gonna be log base E of 72 is equal to X. We switch it, switch it. E to the X is equal to 72. And I have no idea what power of 2.72 approximately gives us 72. I had to start guessing and checking. So the things that I guess, I guess E to the, looks like I guess E to the five first. I thought that that was a pretty cool idea. It was 148 approximately. I'm cutting off decimals all over the place. I did E to the fourth. That was approximately 55. So I knew that my answer was somewhere in between four and five. I kept plugging stuff in like a bunch of stuff. And I eventually got E to the 4.27, and that was just barely approximately 72. We are going to need to find a way to do these problems without guessing. We don't have them yet. So right now we have to stick with problems that look like this stuff up here. 
that come out nicely and don't end up being decimals. Okay, well, how does that help us graph, Mr. Beal? How? Well, now we know how the freaking thing works. So we can graph this. Specifically, what we want to do is we want to identify our asymptote, just like with an exponential function. And in this case, it would be just at zero, at x equals zero, going up and down. The next thing we want to do is we want two points, two, to graph this bad boy with. And those two points are going to be one and the base. Mr. Beal, I don't understand. You're a crazy person. Guys, look back at this one originally. We wanted zero, which gave us one. We wanted one, which would give us whatever our base is. We have to flip that around when we do the inverse. See how it started with one and gave us zero? And then we put in the base and it gave us one. That's what's happening right now. So when I go and do this, and I plug in one, what power of three will give you one is what this says. If it's log base three of one, that's equal to zero because three to the zero equals one. That's me undoing it super fast, bam. The other one is the base, log base three of three. Well, what's that equal to? That's gotta be one. Why, Mr. Beal? Switch these guys around. Three to the one power is equal to three. There it is. It's got to be one. There's our base and we get one there. We're gonna be at one zero, boop. And one, two, three, up one, which means our graph is doing this. Oh, look at that amazing hamburger time. Let's try it again. Now, we want to plug in numbers that will give us one and the base. So as I look at this thing, I've got to think, well, whatever I plug in there, I'm gonna to have to subtract two. I wanna get one, three is what works for that. Three minus two makes one. We're gonna go log base four of one and log base four of one is zero because that's the power of four that will give us one. For the base, I want this number right here to be four. So I've got to plug in six. Log base four of six minus two. Oh, what's six minus two? That's log base four of four. And log base four of four is just one because it's what power of four gives us four. Woo, look at all them words. So I'm going to three zero, boop, and six one. And you may notice these points are a lot farther along than those points were. And that's because we have moved our asymptote. But Mr. Beal, there's no, there's no plus thingy out here. It should say plus zero. Our asymptote should still be at zero. No, our asymptote now has to do with this number. It's completely inverted from the exponential function. The exponential function, your horizontal asymptote was out here. The logarithmic function, your vertical asymptote is on the inside. Our vertical asymptote is over here at two. Curves out that way, curves in this way. Mm -mm -mm. We got it. One more, just one more. Just let me fit in one more, please. That guy. So we're gonna use all of our tricks this time. Every single thing we've got in the bag. Let's start it where we're supposed to start it, not with one in the base, but where is this asymptote? I go to the inside, I've got a plus five. We know that's not actually gonna be plus five out here because it's inside. That means it's supposed to be left five. One, two, three, four, five. Asymptote. Right there. Next, what number can we plug in to get one? Well, I think we'd plug in negative four. We'd get log base two of one plus seven. That's gonna end up being zero. Zero plus seven is seven. 
So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, I moved a lot. Now we need to get the base and it looks like our base is two. So the number we're gonna plug in with that plus five is gonna be negative three. Negative three plus five makes two. Log base two of two is one and one plus seven makes eight. Let me write that out real quick. Log base two of two plus seven. This is gonna end up being one plus seven. Oh yeah. Negative three, positive eight. Boop. There is our curvature. It's going towards this guy and then it takes off that way. That's it, y'all. Not only have you learned how to graph logs, albeit quickly, you've also learned what the definitions of logarithms is, which I'm sure you are going to need in the near future. Hey, that's it. Stay safe out there. Go crazy. <laughs>